Hello everyone, Darren here, and welcome back to City Skylines. Now, in the last episode, I'd expanded our transport infrastructure by adding trams to our city, specifically in the downtown area, and to pretty good success too. A lot of people tend to be using them. Now, we also added some new hotels, some local banks, and continue to improve our industries and our parks in order to help them level up. Now, in between episodes, I actually streamed the game, creating a brand new park and updating the surrounding area of the university. But so you don't miss out, I've got a handy time lapse to show you how it all came together. Let's begin. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so to kick things off, I'm just adding a very small little park here on the base of Robin Heights. Now, this was actually at the very beginning of the stream, and I was kind of testing things out. My question was whether or not a city park, so that's one of the parks with the, you know, the DLC that you paint a district for and you add a main gate. My question was, if I made one of these and it was really small and it didn't have a main gate, would it operate and count, in quotes, as a park? Like, would it work? And people said, yeah, it would. Now... It didn't seem to. I mean, it kind of does. I think it is a park area, but it doesn't level up. You don't get any of those uh, level up entertainment value, ticket prices, any of that, because there's no main gate. So that's fair enough. So I actually removed the district itself and just left it as a series of gravel paths, some trees, some props, and it's attached to one of the regular parks that's in the base game. So that seemed to work pretty well and it kind of filled that gap. Now, what I don't show is actually I went around the entire Robin Heights and anywhere there was little open green patches like that between the arterial road and the residential roads and the cul-de-sacs, I added in the similar sort of things, little gravel paths, some trees, try to kind of clean it all up and make it look like there's, you know, some life to the area. Anyways, so you'll notice that anytime we look over at Robin Heights. So here we are over at what I'm going to be calling Thornton hills so this is a new park i'd said that it was going to be a park for a long time we got rid of all the houses that were on the inside of the street and now we've painted out the district so this is going to be one with the main gate the main gate's already in the first thing we placed in was a lake this is almost entirely suggestion driven from the chat remember this is a stream so this went on for i think about two hours in building this in total and i talk about that a little bit later and it was all suggestion driven. So one of the first suggestions was to add in a lake. So I added a very small one. The next one was to then add some hills to break it up. And then the next one was to do a sort of a roundabout. So again, almost all the suggestions, not just me, but were met with, with in terms of reception to the chat, a sort of hesitation. A lot of people didn't necessarily agree with the idea of the roundabout. And again, we'll talk on a little later, the bicycle lane and stuff that goes around it later. So, but I'm very glad it, we did it. You know, we tried it trial and error to see if it would look good and it works. It seems good. It took me a while to work it out, but it's not quote, quite really a roundabout, right? It's just a pathway that goes in a circle. And in the center of the circle, we decided, well, that's where some food trucks are going to go, uh, a tree, playgrounds, anything like that. So as long as something's there, it makes sense a path would go around it. Obviously, people don't necessarily need a roundabout to walk around each other, but the idea of having something like a statue, something ornate in the middle, um, or something that people use, makes sense why you'd have a path then go around it. It's a sort of a stopgap for people. And it's a nicer way to dress up a junction where three paths meet. Anyway, so, because we had the shape of the hills, and we had the little roundabout thing in there now, and we had the uh, lake, you know, someone suggested a bridge going over, that would look really nice, and it does. And then we're just connecting up all the different pathways to multiple entrances that I placed, I tried to evenly place them around the sides. This is where someone suggested to add a bicycle lane. And again, I was, excuse me, very hesitant with the idea of this. Almost didn't even, excuse me, again, almost didn't even try it. But I'm glad I did, because it actually ends up looking good by the end. At least I think so, anyway. So, but it was finicky. You know, we had to put down this bicycle lane parallel to the path that's on the outside, and then shape it so that it kind of blended in really nicely with it. Uh, and then, ultimately, build a fence between the bicycle lane and the path. Now, I found this really awkward, because I guess I had collision turned on. So, it was trying to destroy the bicycle lane. So, I was being a bit of an idiot with how I was actually drawing it out. And people mentioned in the comments later, like... You could use the line tool to kind of shape it for you. You could also use the parallel track to just make a parallel fence to the cycling road if you have that mod. So I do, and I just didn't use it. So again, it's just some um, user inexperience on my part with some of those things. But we got the job done in the end. It doesn't really matter, I suppose, how we did it. But it could have you could do this much more efficiently and quickly if you use some of those tools. The parallel road tool especially is really good because it's not just for roads, it's for pathways. Anything that's like, um, I guess, nodes. Uh, where nodes are involved it'll just duplicate it right over next to itself and you can kind of then space it so it's really good 
All right, so you can still see I'm just shaping this and I'm again just shaping some of the, the pathways just a little further out, trying to make the place look a bit more interesting. But here we're at the back of some houses, so I had to create a little bit of extra space just behind that, curving the bicycle path in and behind them. And then obviously there's going to be a fence between the bicycle path and those houses so that they are separated, of course. And that's something that I was probably a bit too late to, but I did add in hills and everything, but I kind of forgot that we needed a lot more level terrain before I actually started putting down these pathways. I always often forget to do that. Turning on the contour lines and then uh, early is always beneficial to see then where the pathways should go because then you can follow along the contour lines and not end up having to have too much um, rebalancing or smoothening with the terrain. So I was just checking again some of the terrain value or the land value around the park. It was getting better already. We're seeing new people move in, houses upgrade, get bigger, smaller, whatever the case might be, depending on the type that it becomes. Uh, decided then that multiple more entrances were needed. So I think this place has a total of one main entrance and four side entrances, I think. And uh, just trying to make use of more of the space. Some of the hills, put some gazebos up there, that sort of thing. Again, continuing that fence path all the way around. Sorry, fence path, just fence <laughs> along the path. And then finally wrapping it up. So now we can actually populate the park with various entertainment objects. This is a city park, so it will level up when more things are in there. People pay tickets to go into it. Um, I don't know if you can turn that off. I think you can turn that off completely with a policy, but I have the park on a pretty cheap ticket price, and it seems to be really busy, so I'm quite happy with that. Not looking to squeeze every penny out of people as they come into here, but a little fee is all good, and you can play in the sand pit and stuff like that if you want. Even if you're an adult, as it turns out, as we saw, I can't remember what I named him, Chris Smith or something. It was kind of this uh, strange looking dude to an extent, kind of kind of strange, not that strange, but a little strange. Heading towards the sand pit to just have a day where he was going to play with the kids, I guess. Nothing wrong with that. Until there is. All right, so putting some picnic tables down by the lake, some street lamps in the center of them so they light up nicely in the evening. Uh, another thing that I need to do is just I added every type of food truck in and around or in on the inside of the roundabout then decided that it would look good if we had a few more uh different variety food trucks kiosks that sort of thing going outside i added little signs on the beginning of every entrance so there's a little sign that kind of comes in tells you about the park uh, you'll notice that there's gaps in the fences between the fence and the gates and that's because building that cycle lane parallel to the pathway means that you're connecting nodes all over the place that you can't see. You can't necessarily see all the specific nodes, I think, for the pathways, unless they just are the nodes of the road. That could make sense. Anyways, what was ended up happening was a lot of the people who were cycling would just phase through the fence as if it wasn't there and join the path when they wanted to get back out. Now, they tend to do it at very specific spots. Again, in verbalizing this, I realize it's probably the nodes of the road. But anyway, because that's usually where lanes merge or lanes change and things like that. So. Um, I ended up creating little gaps in the fence just so they can go through and it looks much better that way And I don't mind having a little gap next to the entrance anyway. It's like a side gate and I've seen that in real life anyway, so it's fine uh, So yeah, I don't know if I necessarily agree with myself on this one We added in the little jetty onto the lake, but then I also went a bit bigger and added the park info booth As well as the cafe is it? Oh, no, I think it's the cafe and the tick and the toilets for a park this size, I just don't know if I'd, we would necessarily really have that. I feel like a park this size, to be completely honest, wouldn't even have gazebos or anything. But just in the interest of getting some more entertainment value out of it, I thought we should add some of these things in. Um, a lot of these types of parks, I ended up on the stream bringing up Google Maps and showing an area roughly close to where I live and parks that I've frequented. And, you know, there isn't that many amenities in them. It's largely just grass, trees, and a few trails and benches. That's, that's it. There's not really things in there most of the time and some of them are huge really really big oh actually you'll have like a, a, the one i like anyway there's like a duck pond and things like that but there's nothing like that would need to be manned by anyone no, no staff or or any upkeep really other than maybe the sort of general park maintenance where you're keeping the grass down or whatever like that i suppose if you're trying to do a very realistic park that's feels like this one's kind of small for the amount of stuff that's in it. Whereas the other one, Rosewood Park, is really big and it kind of makes sense that that is next to a commercial center. It would charge tickets as you go through, that sort of thing. And it actually has services inside. I was struggling with the sand too a little bit. It doesn't seem to be very fine, ironically. It's very, um, 
loud or big you know it just either does a lot or it doesn't do anything it seems so i was really playing with that for a while adding extra trees and stuff like that in here now I'll talk about this later and we'll show the park in a bit more detail, but I do add more trees after the stream because I wanted to just move off the area. I realized how long we'd spent on it. So again, just adding more trees. I probably could get a little bit better, I think, if I was to be self-critical at figuring out what type of tree to really use and then sticking to it rather than just using a mix of lots of different things. I don't know. I guess that's pending feedback. Anyway, so we're back over at the university area. This is something I wanted to add during the stream as well, or just add to and get some ideas from you guys. So basically, added a baseball field that was one I wanted and that sort of pavilion as you come out the back so really happy with that and then people suggested the soccer pitch so added that one in as well it tends to fit pretty well just there uh, then we did some extra pathways it actually comes baked in with a pathway so we just added a couple onto that to lead out to the street um, it coincidentally actually matched the trees with the trees that are baked into it too I actually just put those ones down and it happened to be the exact same ones so that looks good Again, I think that's like a, a food truck stand that's there, which is specialized in ice creams. And it actually connects across the road. So it's really interesting kind of little building, those ones that connect across streets, I think. Again, just continuing the trees all the way down just to make it look a bit more uniform, more deliberate. Continuing the path inside so that you don't have to walk out next to the street in order just to walk along the trail of the grounds of the university, as it were. Uh, added in a little sidewalk cafe that comes baked in with its own pathway. Added in a, I think it's a helicopter statue. So when you've got a, a couple of helicopter services, then you're able to unlock those statues and place them in. So I think that just fit there and it looks kind of nice as a sort of an artistic thing next to the college. I feel like most universities have some sort of big statue near them. At least the ones I've seen. And then just connecting the pathways up as you'd expect. I was debating putting trees in front of the windows of the, of the university. It seems a bit strange to me to do that, but I do think that happens. And uh, yeah, I think that's basically the area done. Now we'll take a bit more look, like I said, at all these things in a bit more detail, but the last thing then was done off stream, which is this. Basically, I was not happy with how Sea View looked. There was a weird kind of bend in the road, not just this bend, but the bend in the road actually out towards the sea. And I was just never really happy with how the zoning was working there. So I decided just to clear it, which will cost us about 3000 population, but we'll build it all back up, hopefully during the episode and get back to where we were. But I think a bit more of a... I kind of hastily threw it all down. So I think a bit more of a deliberate design is what I wanted to achieve here. So smoothening out this road that goes closer to the river. Uh, just fixing up some of the nodes because I kind of broke them as I was moving them around. Uh, using the line tool to kind of... Or the curve tool to kind of help the curve shape. Uh, fix some of the nodes that were broken on it. I went through things, fix the fixed the speed as well. And then just kind of changed some of the angular roads to be a bit more uniform and straight. And then just brought them into it with... Uh, I guess various junctions that were just a bit more orderly and less kind of chaotic. So this one again, very nice straight, easily junction to go straight into it. Rather than bending the road, the junction is actually slightly bent. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Uh, then again, just trying to go with the curve of the river here somewhat. Creating a kind of a curvy, bendy road that leads around the coast, but it comes off of the bridge. So that's why you have this kind of like natural bend. I was pretty happy with how it looked. I think that adds a little variety without being too awkward for zoning. Um, now for the actual zoning, bringing the roads out straight here, the kind of six lane road that we have with the bus lanes either side, then some of the continuous residential roads that we have, and just trying to design out some blocks that give a little bit of space so we can do other things with them other than just completely residential all the time, and then connect them every now and then to the arterial road, but not all the time, because you obviously don't want too many junctions on top of each other. So some of them are going to be cul-de-sacs. The idea is that this area is largely going to be residential, but I knew that we were going to need some amenities, so obviously a park would be nice, and a school and things like that. So big focus of this playthrough, obviously, is just to get people educated, get as much education as possible out there, get libraries. So this is a community school. It is an elementary school. It holds 900 in the realistic population mod. So I put two of them in there because it's a high density area and then added several car parks at their back because uh, it looks pretty good. I think it all looks like it's part of the one thing and having two buildings the exact same next to each other, but like orientated slightly differently kind of looks like they're just one complex, at least to me. Uh, so nice, uh, I was kind of playing around with parks, coming up with different ideas here, but ultimately went with the park with the little lake in the middle, bridge going over it, that's all baked in, but then adding some gravel roads of my own at the back, and then just adding copious amounts, arguably way too much of these small little parks all the way around it, and then just breaking pathways back out to the pedestrian path. So this area, this 
here is going to give a lot of leisure activity and entertainment value to and land value to all the houses around it so we should see them level up a bit quicker but ultimately i think we're at the behest of education so we'll see how that all goes so we'll leave it there this episode is going to be really filling this place with people and we'll see how we get on all right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, the new and improved City of Swords, this time specifically focusing heavily on our second park, which I've named Thornton Hills. And that's basically because we have the district of Thornton right over here, and of course the area is laden with hills. Now, since the time lapse, I've actually gone in and actually added a few more trees, just tried to clean up some of the details. It's not totally, totally done yet. I feel like I'll revisit this every now and then when I learn a bit more about props or think of props and see things that would look good in here. So there's a few little blank areas that I feel like could do with a bit more, but largely speaking, the area's pretty much done now. We have our little bicycle lane going all the way around, and I've opened up some new cut-throughs so that cyclists can travel through because they were just phasing through the fence previously. And so it just looks a little bit more organic, a little bit more natural to see them actually using the gaps in the fence where we have them. So... Hope people actually dig the idea of that. Look forward to the feedback of maybe doing a stream that can really hone in and focus on one area for a very long time. I was legitimately frightened with how much time I lost in this place because I think I spent about an hour and a half into it and it was only half done. And I thought maybe 40 minutes had gone by. I was really shocked <laughs> when that had happened. But admittedly, you know, reading chat and also looking at some other parts of the city that people wanted to see, that takes a bit of time away. Um, one area that went way faster, though, was obviously over here. We have our Carlo University, Carlo Valley. We've added in our baseball field, soccer pitch. None of this has changed really since the time lapse, so really happy with how this place came together. And it was much quicker because we are using large buildables that do a lot of the heavy lifting for me. All I needed to do was add in a couple of pathways, some trees, level the terrain, that kind of thing. But pretty happy with how it's all come together. Uh, so let's just get back into it. So you'll also see that sea view has now changed. I noted that I actually mean to extend out that district just around here a little bit so that we can fill it in ahead of time so we'll just fill this in great so that's sea view so we can basically start adding people in now although our demands are more for jobs more than anything so the first thing we're going to do is add in a few extra jobs or a few more industry things out this way so this is a bit of a chaotic area and i feel like it still kind of needs a bit more of an overhaul but we're just going to plow ahead anyway <laughs> That's the, the Darren way. I feel like I put enough time into the episode between episodes. So we'll just try to build and plan ahead as best we can for now. So I'm just going to get rid of this little segment and attach this one onto here. And then similarly, break that one away. And then just reattach it like this. So that they're all connected, no problems whatsoever. Alright, good. Now I'm seeing trees popping up. This is the bane of my gameplay, is seeing these trees pop up all the time. So let's see if we can just get rid of them. It's because collision I turn it off sometimes. Other times I have to turn it back on. Someone told me if you double click one of the boxes here, it unclicks them all. Such a helpful tip, so thank you for that. Whoever that was. <laughs> Alright, cool. It's looking good. Right, so... Um, I had noted during the stream, actually, that you'll see that these buildings now look like oil buildings. Now, there's not many of them. Not much variety, really. You see a lot of dino legacy buildings here. And that's because we specialized forest business park for oil. But I'm actually going to get rid of that now. It's going to cause a bit of a job collapse. Might as well do it now, though, while we got rid of the population rather than adding population. So these are going to go away. They're going to reappear probably as regular industry, which I'm pretty happy with. We'll leave it as regular industry. We can afford. We can put more people in these buildings if they're regular. Only six people on this area. It doesn't make much sense. 11 on this one. 15, that's pretty good, but not great. We can have 40, 50, up to 100 in the same amount of space as some of these buildings. So you want to utilize that space a bit more efficiently. But out where we just created extra areas, we could zone this as perhaps some oil special buildings. And that way it might fit the part better. It might look the part better, I guess. So that's what I'm willing to give a shot. So we'll do something like this. Even though it's really small and sporadic, it could look quite good that way. Uh, let's see. Get this and maybe bring it out. Don't want to do that, I suppose. We'll continue down this way. Are we on the grid? We are now. Continue on the grid down here. We'll cut across. Maybe go up a bit and then cut across. Maybe come down a bit and cut across just there. There we go. And just pave the way for our industrial estate to get a little bit bigger because we're going to need more and more people out here for jobs. All right, and then we could just attach this in. Hopefully that's not too bad. And then maybe just remove the traffic lights for now. Okay. 
All right, so not all of this will make oil industry. We'll just pat uh, some of it. We'll try to patch it as oil industry. I reckon these areas will be good for the oil industry looking buildings. So what we'll do is we'll create a, um, a little district. This is almost more for the aesthetic than it is for the functionality of it, but we'll see how it goes. So on, f so the way I learned this is it doesn't have to be an industry area. <laughs> it just has to be a regular district that we then paint or we assign oil. That's why I didn't have it before and that's why it wasn't quite right. So I suppose what we want to do is maybe just do something like this. Something like that. doesn't have to be too accurate to anything. It's more just for the aesthetics, I feel like, than anything. Uh, so, policy. No, not policies. Although policies could be good, we can use the industrial space planning. Industrial space planning doubles the amount of goods produced by the zoned industry buildings. I feel like that's worthwhile for these buildings, which are going to be kind of smaller, generally speaking. Um, so, we'll see how that goes. And then the next one is into our zones... We look at the industrial zoning, and then we have oil industry, and then we click it. So that's, I think this has came before the industry's DLC, and that's why it's like different than painting an industry area. I think that's why. Uh, right, so that's an, in so what we should see now is these types of buildings popping up over there, and these are going to become regular factories. So that should look a bit better, I hope. Uh, we will bring this straight out as well, why the hell not? And then maybe if we dezone this road segment, like so. That gives us more zoning opportunities here. Alright, we'll just zone this as well. Why not? So we're going to get a lot of people moving in this way. Okay. Let's see how that goes. Big changes. So all this business is going to go away. All this big tech business. Big industry. Gone. And then maybe we can move this over just to the side here. All right, worth mentioning as well, I painted down just a little extra oil back on some of the deposits that are run dry. People have asked me to basically make it infinite. I'll probably do that, but I haven't fully decided where we're going to place it yet. I'd like to probably just get to the point where we have the offshore drilling rig and just make that infinite. Maybe a little bit on the coast, like a little bit. Um, there's still further oil up there I, we could have got. I just felt like it's just going to keep running out, so we might as well just plow on ahead until we get to that next tier, which is only a matter of time now. We just have, we have the amount of workers, we just need the amount of units. So once we make those amount of units, then we can build the offshore drilling rig, we can maybe set up some, and like an industrial harbor is kind of the goal. Cargo ferry terminal and stuff. I don't know if that's what we get next, is it? Yeah, cargo harbor, there it is. So we have to get to 32,000. So it's all sort of building towards that, our shoreline industry. Let's just call this shoreline as well. Um, Shoreline Business Park. Alright, it's basically the same thing. Alright, cool. So, uh, something I'd be meaning to do, and we'll have to do this as we... L I'm so sad our city needs to be ruined by those ugly oil pumps. Shut up, Rosemary. Um, something I'd like to do is just... We're going to get a lot of people moving in very soon. So, I need to configure some of the roads here. Because it's going to back up like crazy. So, what we need to do is lane one has to be left turn only. And the right lane is going to be going straight only. And we got to do that in multiple places. So left turn only for that lane one. So you can just see here, if you're in this lane, you're taking the left. If you're in this one, you're going straight. Obviously, some cars have made the decision already, so that's fine. Don't have to worry about that one. So it's just a few of these that we need to do on the way up. Yep. And it should help mitigate some of the travel problems I'm anticipating. Traffic problems, not travel problems. Tra traffic problems. Uh, actually, you can do it here as well. I forgot to say... Junction as well. Time traffic light is working pretty well, although I think there was actually an issue with that that I could maybe adjust. Let's see if I've got the time to do it now. So we'll just open this up. Time traffic light, boom. We'll stop it for a second, and we'll have a look. So if I recall correctly, I feel like I could have been using utilizing right turns a little bit more or something. So... Let's just go view this one. So this is the first state, second state. Yeah, this one, third state. So you're able to go forward and left, you're able to go forward and, and right, but no one else is really doing anything. You're going straight, that's totally fine, but you can definitely turn right at this point as well. So we'll edit this one, say yes. And I'm gonna change this down to three. I've been learning a little bit more about these and I'm getting a bit better at it, I think. 
So basically, yeah, that's fine. So basically, three ticks is... We'll just hit start on that. Three ticks is the minimum. And then it'll just look for the condition if more people are waiting on the, on the other sides, then it'll flip. Or switch. So that's pretty good, actually, because you could have the minimum be like one second, and then the, the lights will just change basically instantly to whatever side needs it the most. Um, which is pretty good, but I think it's just a little better to give it a bit more time, a bit more realistic, maybe, because it, it shouldn't be flipping back quickly, I don't think. And then the way we've done the road lanes, people aren't going to be, yeah, converging over each other too much, although they're swapping a bit. But it's fine, I guess. Alright, now, I've done the lane markings for this roundabout. I need to do them as well for a roundabout down here, and then we're going to zone everything and see how it goes. Uh, so let's do the lane markings right here. So this one into this one, connect those two up, and we'll just do this all the way around. So if you're in the right lane, you're going into the closest lane to you. If you're in the left lane, you're going to any of the other two furthest out. This should just work. I'm not saying it's correct. It should just work, though, for utilizing multiple lanes. Right, so that's easy enough. Now on the other way around, you need to do a similar thing. So you're going here. Yep. If you're in the second lane, you're going, oh uh, crap, to the far out lane or to this one. And then if you're in the far lane, you're going to those two. So you have to keep that going all the way around. Probably not explain that very well. So again, if you're in the rightmost lane, you're just taking that first exit for you. If you're in the middle lane, you're taking the far exit or you're going, you're crossing over to go to the far lane. What? I don't know how to explain those, uh, which one's the far one, the inside and the outside, the outside lane. That's the correct terminology. All right, and then you're going to the both, the in inner <laughs> and the middle. <laughs> oh God. All right, it'll work. I'm, I'm confident in that. Okay, so that's basically it. That's the only three things that had to be done there. And we'll probably have to do that up again up here to some extent. Is this three lanes? No, it's actually just a two lane. And was this three lanes? Yes. So this one's a little easier, actually. And then we have the slipway as well. All right, you know what? Let's just start zoning. I think we're safe enough that we can start zoning. So we're going to zone this branch here for sea view. So we have our lovely couple of community schools here. And then we have our nice big park. Let's see view. A lot of people are inside of already. Looks good. People are loving it. Might be nice to add in a little um, crosswalk here, right? Let's just change that to a crosswalk. Nice. It's pretty close to the little bridge thing as well, so that's good. Sun setting. I know it's getting a little dark. I actually upped the exposure slightly, so that should be better, but it still does. It is quite dark, I admit, this playthrough. <laughs> All right. I did a very similar... Oops, sorry about the alarm. I did a very similar thing here where the traffic is basically splitting off in different directions. We have a time traffic light. So I've just been experimenting with time traffic lights. I've been getting a lot better with them and understanding them a bit more. And things seem to be flowing reasonably well. We're down to 76, though, because there's going to be a lot of cars as all these businesses move in and they have to go deliver or get their goods from up here. I think that's what's happening anyway. Ah, they also need water. point. I forgot about that. Yeah, so I feel like traffic will get backed up. Especially with new people moving in as well. We got pretty thick two lanes of traffic here. They're waiting at the lights, and then they're all here to take a left to get into the city. Wow, that light was pretty harsh, actually. Went red pretty quickly. Maybe we can look into why that is. It seemed to change maybe a little too quickly for my liking. Oh, it's better now. Yeah, I don't know. I'll leave it then. I'll leave it. It should be flowing as long as there's more people... Unless there's more people waiting at the other two, you know? Yeah, there we go. Love to see it. I might change the threshold of that just slightly, but at least that's a bit better. Alrighty, so we have new people moving in. Good to see. Uh, we can now, I assume power has joined across, so we can get rid of the power lines here. And then we can just rezone this as well. Because we've added all the new jobs, now we need new people to come in and help us with all that. 
All right, so another thing we're going to do is just extend these roads out. So this seems like a pretty good spot to do it. We'll just come straight out here, turn the zoning back on. Something like that. I'm just trying to think if this needs to come out as well. I guess that makes us very grid-like indeed. But it is organized. <laughs> So what I was thinking is one of these areas here, probably in here somewhere, we could add in a new school. There's no high school here. So I was looking into the Institute of Creative Arts. I was thinking that looked pretty good. A prestigious school specializing in creative arts educates teens, an alternative to the high school. So stick this one in here, right on the edge. Why the hell not? And then what would be good for this area too is a public library. Oh yes, there's actually just one grid of space. That actually just totally worked out. One grid of space, because in the stream, I was kind of toying with the idea of putting it here, but it just wouldn't quite fit. And then we put the baseball pitch there. So a public library here, I think, is actually a good, a fairly good reach for most of the people in Seaview. Maybe here would be, eh, you're, you're going to lose people either way. Now, at the back of this, what could we do? Maybe big car park? <laughs> yeah, I mean, car park fits really nicely. That works. And then we'll bring a pathway between the two. Just to demarcate it. And then maybe one of the tourism things. Park with birches. Uh, yeah. That looks good. At the back of the high school. How many people are in this? 1,560. Got it. All right. Yeah, let's add another pathway in here then. And just see if we can get it to kind of link up. Just right to about there. Pretty good. And then that leaves us with a little pocket here for some props or something. Um, it's the back of a high school. Maybe some of those food trucks could be a good idea. At the back of a high school? Hmm. Maybe. Let's type in... It's either that or just places to sit, I guess. Some picnic tables, maybe... Uh, bench. Yeah, so we've actually got these ones here already. Different style. I think it's this one, is it? Yeah, it looks like it's that one. So try to keep the style the same, I guess. Maybe just one here. Another one there. Yeah, a place for them to, like, have lunch, right? rotate them a little bit. And I'd say a food truck would be here, personally. Some some sort of, like, little thing. Would, be part, would it be facing in towards that direction, or would they face it out? I feel like it'd be strange to eat at the back of it. Maybe we could stick it on this side of the road. Or the path. That might make a bit more sense for them. Something like that, I don't know. If you have ideas, let me know and we'll pop some stuff in here. I think like trees and things obviously make sense, but I'll, I'll leave it so that you guys can have some input. Because I often get, I don't know, I have various ideas in my head of what I'd like, but I'm not really sure always what the game has to offer that I can put down. Like if I was designing it in the real world, I have a few various ideas of what you could do. There's different things in, at the back of my college campus as well. But, you know, it depends what the game has to offer as well. The ones that I can only think of that the game has is picking tables, food trucks, that kind of thing. Uh, trees. Alright, so pretty happy with that. What might be good actually here... Oh, you know what? We'll break it up a bit. And we'll get the road to come down... Like so. But not all the way. Yeah. So let's get back on the grid. We'll go to right about there. And we'll make that... Now, how is the traffic, by the way? I imagine it's getting backed up, is it? It's actually, uh, it's still kind of the same on the bridge. It's starting to get a little backed up. Hmm. Yeah, I imagine it's going to get backed up as people move in. 76%. So what I was thinking of doing, when we start zoning all of this, I might actually ban pedestrian traffic on this road. <laughs> So just leave that for services for now, and then they'd be forced to use this area. Come up this way, come in here, 
or go up and around maybe. That might just just ease the traffic for when they move in because I've seen this massive shock can happen when you've got a lot of people at once. Uh, but what we'll do really quickly, I'm just going to do high density commercial because there's a decent demand for commercial right now. And you know what? I feel like this can come down further so we'll bring it down just that little bit more than it normally wants. There we go. And zone this area. So that's high density commercial now. So you've got your library, car park, park, high school, elementary schools, all the living space uh, in this area here. Big park for the entire area. University right across. We need to add in some bus stops and obviously tram stops then as well. But we're going to have to actually unfortunately just take a mini break. I've got a driving lesson and I've kind of bled into it a bit. So I'll be back with the magic of editing. Alright ladies and gentlemen, I am back. A little bit of time has passed in game, really not that much, just a few seconds to get me to understand what I just did. I had my driving lesson, nobody died thankfully, and uh, let's get back to designing some traffic grids from someone who's clearly capable of doing so. So we just placed down this, just as a reminder to myself, I'm going to vocalize it, we have the high density commercial zone coming in here, looking good. That's going to maybe actually just really quickly, I'm just going to get rid of a little bit of that because I just realized we probably won't have enough people to even work it all of it just yet so let's just get rid of this much that's still going to be plenty lots of jobs are going to be pop popping in here so i'm not too worried about it um so something i was thinking about is um excuse me it was mentioned in the comments of the previous episode that i take things a little cautiously i think was what they said being a bit careful and uh that's there's a the main reason for that basically is that there's a big highway here that we don't have access to so all my traffic flows in from one point and I'm aware that this is not a good solution, but whatever reason, the way this map starts, or where I chose to start, I guess, was in from this big intersection, interchange thing, whatever you want to call it, interchange, I think. And because it's just outside of my bounds, it makes it very difficult to kind of decide how to pull a highway in this way and do anything else with it. But we've got loads of highway here, where if I was to, ex was to expand this tile, I'd have access to it, we can bring it up and into the into the heart of the city like a big artery straight into the left ventricle supplying us with tasty oxygen and uh we could really um get all the carbon dioxide out as well right <laughs> basically until we get this tile unlocked i have to play it a little careful and i have to watch how much i zone and how much i expand so carefully because we get this we get backed up with a lot of traffic coming in i've run a test you know i've tested zoning this whole place just to see what it would do and basically, everything gets gridlocked. So that's why I take it cautiously. Now, some people might say, just build another highway. But I, I, I guess maybe it's my lack of creativity. I'm not really too sure where the highway would fit in here. You know, this is always meant to be sort of the suburbs with this arterial road that goes around. I guess that could be a highway, maybe. But that's, I don't know, you're pushing up against the train line and stuff now. It's a big project to do that. I'd just rather this idea of having the highway coming in this way. That would take a lot of the load off of this area here tremendous amount and this would actually be a really nice little highway to get out then uh, rather than bring things in so much and only some things would come in this way probably the stuff for the industry in the far well i guess the the industrial stuff down here but people i reckon will mostly be coming in here because this is where all the high density living is going to be um so yeah hopefully i've explained that just a little bit not necessarily saying i'm playing it perfect or anything i am being a little cautious but just hopefully giving you my reason for that and i'll try to get to that point soon I and mean, we've got a lot of money now we do have this tile unlocked it's probably about time i start thinking about how we lay out this side of the town what's going to go there some bigger buildings like stadiums and things i was looking at that as well and i was thinking that'd be quite cool i don't know is there a sports arenas here somewhere tourism and leisure uh pretty sure damn i can never remember where anything is in this game everything moves there we go. Yeah, so I was looking at this and I was like, this would be awesome to slam it even right in here. And we could run like football games and stuff. The only problem with this, of course, is noise. All the people living next to it would be really unhappy. So maybe as this is commercial, as this is education, something like down here could be kind of sweet. If we could just slam it in on the side there. Let me know what you think. I'd, I'd be pretty happy with it there. But maybe if the plan for the city is to go out this side, it should be a bit more centralized. And maybe this road shouldn't really go down the center the way it does with the roundabouts and stuff. So it's all up, up in the air, I guess, you know. We just have to see how it all shakes out. So let's um see how the traffic's doing. We're up to down to 74%. Let's speed up time a bit. Let's see if we can wait for that to sort of flush out to some degree. While we're waiting, actually, let's... Uh, plan for things so we had just placed in the high school we have the public library 
they need transport, right? So let's go with the metro line. Sorry, the tram line, excuse me. No, I am thinking metro, actually. Yeah, sorry, metro. Metro station, right around here. Now that's going to affect some noise pollution even across the road, it seems. So maybe just more across from the actual school area would be better. Um, so let's see. I'm just trying to think about how many tiles. One, two, three, four. About there is pretty good, but if we want to really clear that other area. One, two, three, four. Maybe there. And that leaves us eight grid spaces on each side. Some buildings, you know, four by four is usually a nice big building, so it might be more commercial in the future. So we've got another line right there, which means, of course, we'll have to think about building underground. So we'll go normal mode, all that's all good. Go down to negative 12, if we can. And just bring this bad boy all the way out. So our line is there. We'll just put it all in the same line. I don't really see why not right now. Maybe in the future we'll have multiple parallel lines running or one over and under each other, depending on the needs of the city. But for now, I think keeping them just on one line that goes back and forth with multiple, just adding more carriages to it seems to make sense to me. Or more trams, like metros. What are they called? What's the actual locomotive called of a metro? Because it's not necessarily a train. Train. I don't know. You guys can let me know. Getting off base or off track. <laughs> track. All right. In you go. Let's get to about... I want to go up to here and then bring it across. I can't quite see. It's latching to something I don't want it to. There we go. That is a sharp bend, I must admit. But it's not too bad. <laughs> Just say it's not too bad and then that means it is. Alright, so let's get the actual metro... What, what have people been saying, by the way? Scientists research possibilities of using cooking oil as fuel. Food enthusiasts are afraid the development might endanger delicious meals. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get this line to continue out. So drag the stop to move it. We'll drag it all the way down here, and then we'll just add back in these ones. Can I do that? It won't let me click here. There we go. Drag line to add stop, and there we go. Got it. All right, so the stops are back, and we've got a new one down here for all these people that'll be out this way in the future. Now, I had said, I, I don't know if I did it or not, if I even did say this, but I was toying with the idea of removing pedestrian cars from this area and just making it service vehicles only, because service vehicles have to go from this industry. Uh, there's a lot of industries down here, but... Maybe we could make this so that, yeah. Just to divide up the traffic. It is just temporary until things settle, until people have moved in. I hope. I mean, that's what I'm banking on. I'm betting on that. But So we're going to grab the vehicle restriction tool. Select maybe just this area here, and we'll turn off private vehicles. Holding shift means the whole road is banned from it. So private vehicles are not going to be coming in this way. It's just going to be service vehicles. And then, similarly, we're going to do the same thing on this side. Except for the opposite thing. We're just going to stop, stop trucks coming this way. So buses and everything else, they're still free to do what they want. And you're free to get out that way if you want. That's okay, too. But let's see what this does. It's just a temporary thing. It's really just to control traffic flow. So these guys are going to go go this way until they get off the road. But as you can see, we've already just thinned out. In fact, cars are just deleting themselves because they probably don't know where to go. But they should just be able to redirect out down this way. I think. Let's make sure I didn't make a mistake with that, right? Yeah, it's just trucks. Private vehicles are free to go this way. I'm sure we'll see them going this way soon and getting a bit backed up in the process. 72%. Yikes. What have I done? Um, and hopefully more people will start getting that metro service too. Alright, so there's a need for more housing. We're going to pile them on. I ain't afraid. Pile them right in there. Let's get some more along here. And I don't think I'm going to... Uh, yeah, sure, why not? I was thinking something else could maybe go here, but why not just have some buildings there? It's next to this. Oh, actually, the metro is a good reason. So maybe we'll leave that then for something else. Across from an elementary school, slash community school. Not sure what you could have there, but something. Plaza. Obviously, because we already have a big lake and things. I feel like our parks are relatively well spaced out at the moment. So I'm not too sure. Again, that's one for the ideas in the comments. Got a date? PM me your best hashtag fish dish recipe. Hmm. I got nothing, I'll be honest. 
Has this worked, by the way? I'm seeing a lot of private car. Where are you going? Oh, yeah, by the way, check this out. We are now driving. Well, I'm not really driving. I'm just behind the wheel. And I can actually look around. So we're following this car going around the roundabout. If I just pull back a little bit. Hang on just one sec. Just pull back a little bit and sink ourselves down into the ground. And then we'll come forward. Now we can see kind of the bonnet of the car. Just a little bit. This must be a small car. There we go. We're crossing over into this lane as we look to go 51 kilometers per hour around the roundabout. Picking up speed, heading heading down towards the downtown area through our new bypass. Pretty cool feature, right? So this is a mod called the First Person Camera. Just activated it in the stream and then for this video here. And basically allows us to, you know, just follow cars more closely. It allows us to do a few other things, like get rid we should have to get rid of those trees. Uh, but let's do a few other things and kind of configure what's on screen and stuff as well if you wanted to. So if we just tab out of this for a second, uh, what we can do is you can click it and activate it by selecting a vehicle that you want to follow. But you can actually just click it down here as well or just press the grave key, which is the key next to the number one. It's not the tilde key. A lot of people say that it is, but it's not on my keyboard anyway. So if we click this, you've got hide the games panel, hide the info panel, change the field of view, the speeds and stuff like that. Change the... Um, if you wanted to snap back to where you left off and so on and so forth. A few different things you can do. Uh, I've left it with the UI on so we can see a lot of different information. So it's kind of just kind of nice to have that info. So for instance, we know our speed. In the top left, the driver of this car is Anna Price. She's using an SUV going to buy City Skylines 2 in new commercial center. So that's a little thing I guess they threw into the game to soft advertise it. Um, where you'll see a new thing that people do is when they're going to the commercial center, they'll literally say, I'm going to buy City Skylines 2. Um, and then it says the name of the road that we're currently on as well. So it's just nice to get that perspective. And also you catch things that you might not otherwise catch, like those trees that were just spaced out in the middle of the road. Also, maybe you get a feel for the speed uh, if people are using both lanes, that sort of thing. So that's kind of nice. And you see where they're from and where they traveled from and stuff like that. So that's cool. I really like that feature. I think it's, oh, it's not a feature. It's a mod. It's a great mod. They should definitely add that into the game if they could as standard because it's actually in a game like Anno 1800. You can get down on the ground and walk around. And it's such a cool feature to be able to do that in a city builder, I think. Now, I'm noticing a bit of slowdown here. Are you... The camera just did a complete flip. Oh, they're okay. They're going from an 80 into a 60. It's just a bit of crossover. That's okay. All right, how are we doing? So we're up to 20, nearly at 24,000. I think this episode or at this, the, you know, the stream would have ended at about nearly 25. So we're still down on what we previously had living in here. But that's because not everyone's fully grown and everything yet in these places. Wow, 250 uneducated people living in this house or in this um, place. It's a big building. A lot of people moving in. That's why I say with this mod, you throw... You put down a building and suddenly 250 people are coming by car into your city to get to where they live or whatever, you know, something like that. Some of them arrive by bus in the bu into city bus terminal. Some of them are just driving by car and that's just going to cause, cause traffic jams in so many places. And I'm telling you it's because of that. So believe me when I tell you it is. These guys are just completely backlogged. Now, do we have a time traffic light on that? We do. I set that one up beforehand. I think. So they should be working fine. And then we've changed how this works. So private vehicles are also making their way out this way. Hopefully that's okay as they get to work. And it's just, as you can see, barely anyone's using this now. It's just going to be the commercial vehicles as they look to get their goods in here. But private vehicles have to go all the way down and sneak around if they want to get over. Crossing over this way, going up this way. And then they're all coming in here now. So again, not to just, again, just to divide the problem up just slightly. We'll also say that this is not going to be for private cars anymore. So I want private cars to go that way now. Hopefully they figure that out. Just do it on this one too. So very micromanagey, I know, but maybe it'll work. Because <laughs> we are backing up the place now with that. And it's people just going home for the first time. Oh, by the way, someone uh, asked me to activate in the TMPE mod, right, which is con doing a lot of our traffic stuff for us. I did actually recently s turn one of these things on. Gameplay. 
Oh, it's off. I thought I turned it on. Let's turn that on. Enable advanced vehicle AI. They should divide up lanes a bit better this way, I think. I don't know what this means. Dynamic lane selection. Let's just do 50%. <laughs> um, but the other one was parking AI. Enable more realistic parking. Now, I would love to be good enough at the game to do that. That is very difficult. Very, very difficult in my opinion. So what it does is it basically says that almost everyone, not every everyone, but almost everyone have to park their car realistically. Like they can't just have a car that goes into their pocket, right? Disappears. It has to be parked somewhere and ideally near where they're going. But it seems that the amount of parking needed, because I'm using the realistic population mod, right? So we have far higher density, 200 odd people living in some of these places. The amount of parking that's then required in a place like this is extreme. So I activated it just to test it. Immediately gridlocked everything, like immediately. It was insane. And it gives you an actually cool overview. So we have this normal traffic overview here where we can see our busy roads, right? Where, where everything is getting backed up and stuff. And when you activate that TMPE mod to say, I want realistic parking, this color scheme, this legend actually appears over the buildings as well. It's really neat. And it'll tell you how much parking are in certain buildings and how much is getting used or not used enough. So if you've got a fully red building, it's like, yeah, there's not enough parking here. Too many people are trying to use it. They're not able to or whatever. You know, it's got a lot of problems. So all my buildings are like red. So I just even tested, it was total testing. I just paved out a road this way, threw down eight multi-story car parks, didn't solve it. So I was like, well, forget this then. There's no solving that <laughs> to me anyway. So I just thought it was interesting to point out, like I have been dabbling and trying a few of these different things, but yeah, no go on that one. Uh, something I'm going to do here is get this road to join on out here. And just for now, we'll take away that traffic light. That might give people more options to get into further in or when they're coming out. But I reckon just leave this for a while now. Let things settle. People are still moving in. We're getting icons all the time. Let things settle a bit. Wow, money is amazing. I'm going to be a little cheeky with this one. Either people might disagree with this, but I'm going to get rid of these. Let them let them collapse. I'm going to pave in just the 4x4 and hope that we get a similar building to that one. And if not, so be it. We'll just do this once, but I think we will. So that's going to be way bigger, but I think by the time it levels up, we'll get the building we want. Actually, I'd really like to look at that one, but well, until we get more workers, I feel like I can't actually sustain that. So we'll just wait until that attractiveness comes up a bit further. It'll take a little while, and then when it does, I think it'll change into this building. I don't know if I could do it in a mod, but it almost feels like those two should be reversed. That should be the level one, that should be the level two. That would make more sense. And you can lock this then as historical and just let it fill up, which is what I'll probably do in the future. But yeah, it looks like we're about to hit level two already. There we go, level two. So if I know my city skylines, and I don't want to, I'm assuming this is going to be like this. Yes, it is. So we'll mark that as historical. It now has the same amount as that one, 193. And now we can pave this one, and it'll probably give me the same building again. All right, there you go. How's our area looking? It's looking good. Pretty happy with how it's turned out. Again, don't forget to leave me a little bit of feedback if you have any ideas of what could go here. I would say maybe turn those so they don't all look so uniform. Bushes as well, flower beds, those would be nice, I think. Wow, this is a big building. How many people do we have in that one? 200 workers, goddamn. 450 visitors, 82 jobs available. So, what's employment like now? 7% unemployment, that's pretty good. Getting it down. Uh, there was a comment actually that mentioned this before and just thought I'd address it in case anyone else has this same curiosity, which is, I've been saying I wanna bring that number down and down. They're like, well, you've got at least 9% seniors. Now I've got 11%, right? You've got at least 11% seniors. So how can you ever get unemployment down below that? That's because unemployment is judged against the available potential workforce. It's not judged against the entire population. Otherwise, you'd have to factor in children and teens as well. So children, teens, and seniors don't work. At least, I don't, I'm not sure about teens, but I don't think so. I think young adults do and adults do. Um... So yeah, so that's basically how that works. So 7% of the adult slash young adult population who could work are not currently working, and that is the unemployment metric. And the, the reason they're not is because they're either too highly educated, not educated enough, one of those two. And that's basically the only reason. 
Because then otherwise unemployment would always be at like 30% or something. All right, what's the traffic sitch now that we've changed things around a bit? 78%. All right, let's get a little more aggressive here towards the end. Let's do the last batches. So we're back up to basically 80, right, for traffic. So things are looking good. I'm going to remove the zoning on this particular road, and then we should be able to cram a few more in on these sides. So let's think about this. Um... Sorry, I was, just, I was thinking about something else. I'm going to make this commercial, I think I just realized. All right, so we need to do the upgrade tool. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Hmm. Okay. That's a bit better. I don't want to connect this. It's too many junctions don't actually want to connect it. It's also a bit of a crooked road. Might have to fix that at some point. Now, this means that anything that's in here, it all has to filter out this way and get onto this road. So this is where the bottleneck will come from. Or onto this one. I guess you can come out that way too. Depends which way you want to go, I guess. All right. All high density, please. I just realized the same needs to be done, excuse me, on this side. Let's grab that. There we go. All right. Zoning the crap out of it. What's our vitals like? Water is getting a little tight. Electricity is okay. Sewage treatment is good. Garbage, okay. Average health. What about, um, oh, there's the unemployment percentage. What about uh, crematorium availability and cemetery usage? How are we doing on those metrics? Crematorium is pretty good. Employment percentage is fine. Cemetery usage is 31%. Oh, interesting. Now, I actually failed to mention, but I changed it so healthcare is now back at 100%, which means a lot more hearses are rolling around. So seven potential hearses are out there. So yeah, the, the, cemetery, the, um, sorry, the crematorium is basically empty. Let's tell them to empty out the graveyard. 660 deceased stored. So now 10 hearses should just flood out and send them all to the crematorium. It'll take a while. And they take 10 at a time. Wow. That's a little dark, not gonna lie, but I, I guess so, eh? Let's follow this, eh? Let's see where we, how we get there. So hopefully you all remember where the... I'm just trying to adjust the camera so we're at the bonnet. Hopefully you remember where we're headed, right? We're heading towards the crematorium that we just looked at, which is just across from the financial district. So we'll see how we get on. 82 kilometers, love to see it. Merging into the bridge now, nice and smooth. Checked our mirrors on the left before we did that. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot I can zoom in and out actually, that's kind of cool too. Risky move going across that junction there, I would say. Was there a junction? Oh no, there isn't, there's just crosswalks, okay. Indicator, you have to be taking a left on this thing, yeah? Is this truck gonna indicate? I'm watching. No. No indication. Oh, indicating now. Yeah, late. A little late on that. You don't tell people you're turning left while you're doing it. You're supposed to do it before. It's called an indication of where you're going. Hey, look at our beautiful city. It's really coming up, coming into its own. And people are using this new connection as well, which is good to see. Don't mind the signs that say 50. We can go much faster. In fact, actually, they seem to be going a bit slow. Sorry, I just wonder where that was. <laughs> Oh, whoa. This is awesome. <laughs> Driving around the city. Hey, I want to get in that car. All right, we're now in the commercial area. We've got our big car park to our right. We have our big superstore over there. Getting to a bit more high density. This is our timed traffic light. I forgot to mention, I actually set up this timed traffic light. Again, another thing I did in between episodes. That car park's probably going to be removed, by the way. It's just temporary. And we're following the other th four hearses that are ahead of me. Now, it's an interesting thing. Can they turn right here? Oh, they can. They're just hard banking into the crematorium. All right, cool. That was a fun little journey. Now, we just expanded or allowed for an expansion of all these houses here. They're all, not all going to move in at once because it depends on the demand. Hopefully, having that high-density commercial there isn't going to be too much of a bother for these guys. There's a decent road separating them, but it might create some noise. 
that we'll have to watch out for. Overall, quite happy with it. And how are we looking? So there should be cars, private cars should be heading in this way to move in. But I guess we've got need for more industry and jobs. Now how's that other... Hey, it made the same building again. All right, historical. So these are our historical little office block, all looking the same. Black on one side. <laughs> I guess kind of grayish brick. And then we kind of have a creamy beigey color and then a sort of a red brick, reddish orange. Nice. Hey, look at that. Oh my God, that's what I like to see. Now it's actually been higher before, but 96,000 profits pretty good, right? We'd pull back out 1.2 milli. I suppose it's not that high. Let's just leave it, right? We've got tons of money. If I ever need the money back, we'll take it out. I don't think it's ever going to crash. <laughs> Famous last words, but I don't think so. Uh, something else I think I'd like to do before we end it would be maybe for the tourism and leisure. Do we have the superstore? I saw another store when we were looking through things. That seems like it'd be a good, like... Let me just search it. Store? Depart I think that's what it is. Department store. Small bank. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. There's these ones, which are cool. Oh, there it is at the very end. So these are really like big, large, American-style flat department stores. Then we have this one, department store, that's much, much bigger. I thought it'd be kind of cool across from here. Would it fit in here? No. Again, maybe in and across from the school. Ooh, kind of fits quite nicely, actually, although maybe not perfect. I guess it also depends what you guys say, because I did ask you. Where are we going to put the... Oh, man, it would fit right next to the... If the metro... If we just move that metro station a little bit, it would fit right in there. But I said about the stadium. Sorry. So, yeah, another big mega department store. I just think it would be cool. I really like this one. And that other one is even bigger and potentially cooler. So, we'll have to see. All right, we're just back at the population, pretty much where we left off. So in the next episode, I think what I'm going to do is kind of finally decide where the oil is going to go and format this area just a little bit better so it's not so chaotic, but I'm pretty happy with it. We have all our oil industrial buildings out with our various drill rigs and our treatment plants, and then we have the more factory-style buildings further and further back towards our unique factories. But I think we could overall clean this up and make a proper industrial estate out of it. Because uh, it just feels very haphazard. I like this road. I like the terminal. I like a little bit that's coming off of it. But I think we need to build the coastline now. Or at least get close to it. Just trying to think what else. And how's the traffic for the hearses? They're okay. This one way in, one way out system is actually kind of interesting. But we're getting a bit of a build up here. And we did the lanes. Did we for these guys? Yeah. Oh, they're doing what they should. It's just a lot of traffic. All right, I think that's going to have to be it for this episode. So I'm looking forward to the feedback on this one. I've asked you guys a lot of questions. If I don't get the answers, I'm just going to go plow ahead with my own ideas. And we'll see how it all checks out. Uh, actually, just very quickly before the end. I always say that. But very curious to see. how Are people using these bus lines now? So we just set up the Carlo. Th this one. Oh, my God. It, it seems like it has... Oh! It's got tons of people waiting, but no one's using it. Because it's not using a biofuel bus. So it, it does have people waiting. Just forgot to give it the right bus. So there we go. And it's a district one. All my district lines, inter-district lines, are the biofuel, biofuel bus with 40 capacity. So we'll see if that helps them out. There's literally over a thousand people waiting. So that's my bad. But those buses will immediately start rolling out. Let's bring it up to eight, just like it wanted, because I think that is a lot of people waiting. Uh, so the other one, time is now playing again. So those will start coming out. The other one was a blue line, and it was Robin Heights internal. Now that one is running. There are buses there. There's not many people. There's 176 waiting at the... Oh, interesting. At the park. Wow, there's a lot of people waiting at the park. Not many people waiting at the other ones. But a decent amount. You know, 21. That's a respectable amount for a bus that's going to have, effectively, 30 capacity. So I'd say bring this up to maybe 4. God, it's so busy and noisy in here. Now, can we see these buses? Have they moved moved on up just yet we should be able to see at least one camper van there we go there's one right there we're latched on yeah, this guy knows what he's doing
There we go. Straight away, full up. <laughs> nice. Oh my god, that's a really busy area. Again, I mean, we've got room for trams on this side, so maybe we should just have a tram. That volume is quite high, I admit. So a tram to take people into district, buses to go locally, that might be the smarter tactic. Yeah, buses are very extremely small and local. Trams, inter-district, metro, inter-region, if you want. And we're merging. Yeah, because I don't think the bus is going to be very effective. Its capacity is only going to be 40, because the amount of people, the volume is just simply too high. That's kind of good little tester to learn that anyway. All right, that's, that is truly going to have to be it for this episode. I'm eager to th see what people think of the park, the university, and all this new expansion to Sea View. I attempted to change his name, actually, to Seagate <laughs> after the hard drives. All right, that's going to have to be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to your ideas. Thanks for all the support. Sorry I've missed a few episodes. I'll try to get back on track, and I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.